When I was 10, like many other kids, my favorite part of school was the weekends. Yeah, I didn't like to really sit around and watch TV or goof around at all, really. What I liked to do is explore. And my favorite place to explore was the grasslands and woods near our small cabin in Bowie, Texas. One day, I was walking through those woods with my dad when boom, the ground erupted below me. The wind rushed past my hair. I squeezed my eyes so tight I could only see white. I thought I'd been bit by a rattlesnake, maybe stepped on a landmine. But I looked up towards my dad, <laughs> and he was laughing. He said, those were quail. <laughs> oh, quail. <laughs> I was hooked. It's that exhilaration that drew my passion for hunting well through high school, and it's one of the things I missed most when I was in the Navy. I couldn't wait to get back home and hunt some quail. But when I got home in 1996, all the quail in that area were gone. That's really what started my passion and while I'm here tonight. I wanted to study quail. In fact, I got a PhD in quail. <laughs> and tonight I come to you as the nation's quail professor, where my job is talk to, to talk to our nation's farmers and ranchers about America's greatest game bird, my favorite game bird, the bobwhite quail. Now, you may not be as familiar with quail as I am, and that's okay, because tonight, what I want to share with you is not only why those quail are important to me and those farmers and ranchers, but why they're critically important to you. I call quail the canary of the prairie. And you probably recall, before ventilation was a thing, those coal miners used to place canaries in cages and set them along the mine shafts. As long as they could see that canary move or hear that canary sing, they knew their air was safe to breathe. But a silent dead canary meant something was wrong. Their environment had become unsafe. Well, quail are the canary of the prairie. They live in our nation's prairies and grasslands, and just like that canary, they're very sensitive to environmental change. The key environmental factor for quail is tall grass and thousands of acres of it. Now, that tall grass is important to quail because it protects them from predators like hawks and bobcats. And that tall grass is important to me and you because it cleans the air we breathe, it filters the water we drink, and it plays a critical role in sequestering carbon. So quail are the canaries of the prairie. And as long as those populations are moving along and singing their famous song, everything's going to be all right. But a silent dead quail population, that means something's wrong and our grasslands are unhealthy. Well, quail have been telling us that something's wrong for quite some time. If you Look at the graph of their populations. You can see they've declined 80% since 1967. And if I can draw you back just for a second, back to 1996, you'll see that we had lost well over half our quail by that time. If we can visualize that year, you'll see that quail had waned in the Northeast and only high densities existed in the Midwest. We were worried then. But fast forward seven years, and you'll see those high densities are gone. Fast forward seven more, and you'll start to see holes in the population. Now, this last graph is from only two years ago, and you can see quail are gone in those northern states. And if you draw a line from Pennsylvania down to East Texas, those states are probably next. Quail are becoming silent, and they're telling us something's wrong. They're telling us our grasslands are unhealthy and going away. In fact, in 2014, we lost more acres of grassland to agriculture than the Amazon rainforest did to deforestation, and hardly a word was mentioned. So what's the culprit? Grass, of course, right? It's more important, more profitable for those farmers and ranchers to put that into food than save some grass for some little bird. Can't fault them for that. However, the typical result of conventional farming and ranching looks something like this. Where the ground is plowed and the grass is grazed down to the ground, not one bobwhite would survive. 
little to no carbon would be sequestered there, and if rain did fall on that ground, it would surely run off or erode that ground. And farmers and ranchers would have to spend a lot of money on things like pesticides and fertilizer for regrowth. My research shows that those pesticides they are very detrimental to quail and human health. So what do we do, you ask? We could start by growing some taller grass. But to do that, we'd need to change the face of agriculture. And as I travel around the country as the nation's quail professor, I see three real, three real solutions to do this. The first is grazing. That's right. If you want more grass, graze it. But do it with regenerative grazing. Regenerative grazing is a little different than your conventional grazing. It takes those big pastures and divides them into smaller ones. It takes those cattle and puts them into one big herd. That one big herd moves around those small pastures over the duration of the year, allowing those recently grazed areas to rest and grow back their grass. That one big herd presses the manure and urine into the ground and acts as natural fertilizer. This grows back the grass really fast and you get a quicker return on your clean air, your filtered water, and your sequestered carbon. This picture you're looking at is from 2011 in Texas on a regenerative grazing site. It was the year of our worst drought, but you can see on this site, we had everything we're looking for. We had tall grass, lots of quail, no monetary loss for the landowner, and good health benefits for me and you. Now, the second solution I see, you may find a little shocking. I think we need more quail hunting. I know, I know. It may seem counterintuitive to most of you that if you want more quail, hunt them. But conservation, be it for wildlife, for quail, for grasslands, is almost entirely funded by hunters. Hunters have placed a voluntary tax on themselves. So for every sale of a gun, a bullet, a hunting license, those taxes are directly returned to conservation. Now, my research shows that a private landowner would be very wise to invest in quail hunting. It's part of a $2.8 billion upland game bird industry, and quail hunters played a major role. They spend $9,000 a year per hunter, and that comes out to $243 per bird. That's a major incentive for that landowner to grow more grass have more quail, put a little money in his pocket, and provide health benefits for me and you. Now this third solution is a little more complex, and it's a call for quail corridors. Now quail corridors are vast expanses of grassland so that quail can move freely and we'd have that tall grass. If you take a look at the amount of public land we have in the United States, and then you overlay the grasslands, and then you slowly take them away, what you'll see is that about 90% of our grasslands are privately owned. And those good ranches are very sporadic in that area. So I propose we connect them, building these big grassland corridors with public land paid for by those conservation tax dollars. It would certainly get our grasslands pointed back in the right direction, start building them back, and it would meet all our requirements. We'd have tall grass, Lots of quail, a little money in the pocket for those involved, <laughs> and you know the health benefits by now. We'd have cleaner air, cleaner water, and more sequestered carbon. Well, if you're not a landowner or a policymaker, I'm sure you're wondering, what can you do? I say, be like the 10-year-old Kelly. Go out there and explore those beautiful grasslands. Get involved. Take a kid. Take them hunting. Be the next grassland hero. Of course, you could donate to our research at the University of North Texas. But you know the message now. We need vast expanses of healthy grassland, and your health is in the hands of our nation's farmers and ranchers. We can change the face of agriculture and quail, but you know now are just the messenger, the canary, if you will. And if we can save them, even if it's one quail at a time, we can save the health of all Americans. Thank you.